Hoes and Bros. Happy Cappy season, everyone. A warm welcome to all you new listeners, current listeners, current subscribers. Thank you so much. I couldn't do this without you. Uh, welcome on into the Spiritual Badass Family. I talk about some hard topics here on my channel. Topics that have been shut up and shut down for a very long time. And I encourage you, boo, to talk too. Talk loud. And stand up for moral law. For all that don't know me, I'm Jojo. I'm an energy master, a health coach, a mentor. I'm a physician. I teach people how to transform their entire lives from traumatized to triumphant, broken to brilliant, rags to riches, and fearful to motherfucking fierce. I specialize in human behavior, forensic psychology, and I combine it all with the esoteric arts and sciences of everything, astrology, theology, sociology, numerology, etymology, all the ologies. I'm missing some ologies in there. Um, and I help you navigate through the terrain of tyranny without losing your crown. Hulk smash that like button if you find some value in this video. Subscribe, share my work, drop some shit in the comment boxes for your free giveaway. And brothers and sisters, we're ticking, talking time down <laughs> through holiday season through Christmas. I have a $35 one hour special. I haven't run in a few years. I'm running it this year. It's good till midnight on the 31st of December. Um, it's good for an hour, hour of tarot, an hour of coffee consultation, or an hour of tyrant talking tactics and taking the gas out of gaslighting. Hit me up for that, brothers and sisters. Gift certificates are available, and those gift certificates are good for an entire year. So, what's going on? Maybe we should talk about Cappy season and the solstice yesterday. The shortest day of the year that represents the winter um, upon us here in the northern hemisphere, the summer solstice in the in the southern hemisphere. <laughs> oh, and we've got some Capricorn energy. Um, you know, Pluto at its last degree of well, it's probably around 27, 28 degrees. I, I'm not let me just look. I'm sorry. Pluto at those anoretic degrees in Capricorn, Venus in Capricorn, Mercury in Capricorn, and Lucifer in Capricorn, Mars retrograde, um, still through the holidays, coming out of RX around January, I always want to say the 18th, but it, it's before that, it's like a week before the 18th, not fully coming out of Gemini until March, but brothers and sisters, what does this all mean? We got some some energy that does not feel holiday-like. Where's my aspects? Why won't my aspects pull up? Here we go. Both, let's see, the moon in conjuncting itself, the sun in conjuncting the moon, the sun squaring Saturn, the sun sussy squaring Uranus, the sun squaring Neptune, the moon in conjuncting the sun, the moon squaring Jupiter, the moon trining Saturn, and the moon square in Neptune. Those are the aspects I want to talk about, brothers and sisters, because we're, we're talking about nodal aspects here with Venus and Mercury, Uranus in the North Node, and this Yod with the South Node. This is very destined times to close out cycles with Jupiter. I don't know if I mentioned Jupiter. Jupiter ingressing into Aries, zero degrees. Jupiter is Santa Claus. He's Uncle Jupy. He comes down that chimney and he delivers presents that are both naughty and nice. Um, brothers and sisters, what what is all this going to feel like? So Capricorn, you know, she, when she's, you know, when she's hanging out like this, she's a feminine sign. She's an earth sign. She's a cold day in hell. She's hanging out with Venus, Lucifer, and Mercury, and Pluto. You know, she's cold, she's abrupt, she's um, legal, she's law-like. Uh, she can sound, she can sound blunt and cold, but really she's precise. Um, she's serious, she's very committed, Capricorn. She talks about long-term structured rules 
Law's needs for herself. She's all about respect, Capricorn. She's all about tradition, Capricorn. Um, but, uh, you know, Capricorn can also be fierce. You know, it's a natural born leader. And it rules your authority, your legacy, your, your uh, job, your dirty jobs. A lot of times, your um, your relationship to your father, even with that with that tenth house, even though it's a feminine sign, but it's very serious. Now, I saw a meme today on Instagram, don't you know? And somebody literally said Capricorn is witty AF, and I was like, whoever's doing these meme astrology education is really lost in space. Capricorn is not witty. It's it's more like, um, you know, it's so direct that they'll walk away laughing and you'll think it's sarcastic as fuck, but it'll be so blatant, so bold. Um, I've, I've never really met a witty Capricorn. I met a dumb, I've met dumb Capricorns. <laughs> no offense if anybody listening. I met very shallow Capricorns. The Their wit kind of rolls along with that group think, but I don't, I don't want to go there. I want to talk about Capricorn and how serious, long-term, structured, respectful, traditional, authoritative, even karmic that Capricorn is. And with Jupiter ingressing zero degrees in Aries. Now, Jupiter is very enlarged. It wants the truth. It wants to blast through beliefs. It wants to reach uh, international debating. So um, it, solves, it solves the riddle of the belief and brings you to the truth. But in Aries, it's more of a very headstrong, abrupt, very similar to Capricorn, committed, serious, long-term, structured, respectful, independent sign. Um, and it can tend to get a little egoic here with these two power players of Capricorn and Aries. Um, Jupiter's, Jupiter, when is Jupiter? Oh, excuse me, Neptune. Neptune went direct on the 3rd of December, so we've got a little bit more clarity taking those goggles off of deception, hopefully. Although I haven't seen it a lot yet. I've seen so many people in terrible, terrible places. Um, hold on, brothers and sisters. I'm sorry, I just dropped all my papers here. So Neptune direct, right? Neptune and Pisces direct. Let me just see what degree is that's at. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Now these squares with Neptune building with Mars, like I told you, it would be a third pass with Mars square Neptune. Um, we're not really quite into that right now. We're into moon square Jupiter, moon. Yeah, moon square Neptune, moon, not Mars. Moon square Neptune is where a lot of people with moon squared Neptune feel emotionally entitled, entitled waves, um, or emotionally lost in that fairy tale. Whereas the sun squaring Jupiter is like a deflation of your power even. It's a deflation of what you feel in faith, hope, and belief. So brothers and sisters, what I'm going to ask you is, you know, when... This, there are some frustrating aspects as well. I mean, there's some real frustrating aspects. Um, I live with Mars, Sussy, Susquehadrate, Pluto. Um, I make it work for me because I work in courts and advocacy, but like this, a lot of this energy, like Mars, Susquehadrate, Pluto, is going to make you feel frustrated AF, annoyed AF, you know, like not again AF, frustrated. Um, almost like you're locked into something that just isn't moving, brothers and sisters. And all I can just say is you have to just surrender to the energy and work your own alchemical process. Um, it's not like you against the world, but it's like, it's like um, working as best as you can through these obstacles against the world. There's a lot going on, brothers and sisters. I also want you to keep in mind... Um, the mental health aspects of all of this. I know a lot of people are still suffering. Um, 
you know, longing, begging, yearning, wishing, hoping, waiting for partnerships, feeling very lonely during holidays like Christmas. And, you know, this is big holiday season, right? We've got Thanksgiving and Christmas and um, New Year's and Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and, um, you know, right into Valentine's Day. And, you know, I mean, it's just a huge holiday time. And a lot of people get lonely and lost and feeling worthless. Longing, begging, yearning, hoping, waiting for love, sex, and money, maybe. So, brothers and sisters, the solstice yesterday, 12-21-22. Today's the 22nd of December, 2022. And we're in that zero degrees Aries with these frustrating energies. This is an opportunity right now, brothers and sisters, opportunities to talk about your frustrations, to talk about the things that are serious to you, that you um, expect with respect for long-term commitment, structuring, you know, your plans together with whomever you're moving in with, going over contracts again, balancing checkbooks, getting your taxes prepared for next year. Um, doing your recertifications if you're in the line of work I am or, or with anything in the health coaching field, getting your research and things like that in order, reworking the energy with a serious long-term commitment and respect to yourself and what traditionally feels right for you, which might very much feel like you're going against the world. You're walking towards these tidal waves. Um, so, Chiron also stations direct, <laughs> I believe tomorrow, right in time for Christmas. So by the time Christmas dinner comes, sinners and saints, and you're at your last supper with your apostles, you know, Chiron direct is going to make you want to be direct about some of the shit that's bothering you with the people sitting next to you at the dinner table. You have to be very wise here, like the three wise men, maybe. I don't know. Got to be direct, serious, and committed, and take the authoritative power and respecting yourself, and lay down your law about who's, who's at that last supper. Uh, let me just see what else here. South Node Scorpio in Tropical Astrology with Fortuna North Node. Taurus with Uranus in tropical astrology, where the south node, we have Venus, and, excuse me, in the south node, Scorpio, we have Mars and Pluto as the dispositor, right? And Pluto at those anoretic degrees, Mars retrograding in Gemini, and in the north node of Taurus, we have Venus as the dispositor, and Uranus is sitting there, so it's shaking up your Venusian relationships, Mars relationships too. Like, you know, like when, if you guys have been listening to my channel, you'll know, like I joke around about Venus retrogrades, never to get your hair cut during then, never to partner with anyone, never ever get married or engaged during a Venus retrograde, never get plastic surgery or any kind of haircut or new hair color, ladies and gents. But with Mars retrograde, it's almost similar. You don't want to do the marriage proposals, brothers and sisters. You don't want to buy the brand new fucking car or the brand new house. There's going to be issues. So Mars is the masculine sign that's retrograding. You know, it's hard on surgeries and sickness and, and um, sex, you know, and drive. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. So... In the sidereal as aspect of the north and south node, we have Libra north node with Uranus. Its di dispositor is Venus and Saturn. Now remember the dispositor in tropical is Venus with Uranus. Uranus and Saturn are daddy and, and son. Son. Um, in Aries, in the south node, the dispositor is Mars and Uranus. It's impulsive. That's explosive. That's saying things that you could never take back at that dinner table. But Capricorn, thank God for Capricorn because it's so stable. It's so serious. You know, it's just so 
quiet. You never really, great poker player, Capricorn. So committed to maintaining its authority, its needs, its respect, like I said. Um, its long-term commitment to, you know, whatever the tradition is in yourself. I Hulk smash traditions, as you know, but I also love a lot of traditions. So here we go, brothers and sisters. We have a lot of powerful energy, right? Lightning bolts, lightning jolts, unsettling detachments, sudden explosions, freeze outs. Um, and, you know, a lot of people taking personal criticism to Venus and Mercury speaking in Capricorn with Pluto and Lucifer. You know, the healthiest relationships, brothers and sisters, I hate to tell you, the healthiest relationships in your entire life will be the ones you have difficult conversations with, the ones that you speak boundaries to, the ones that you are not afraid to show you're dark and you're light, you're yin and you're yang, you're Mars and you're Venus, you're left and you're right, you're red and you're blue, you're order, you're chaos, you're sun and you're moon. Um, the, the best relationships that form long-lasting commitments of respect, Capricorn, are ones that speak openly with one another. Direct Capricorn with one another. Um, Capricorn's not impulsive like Aries. Capricorn is stable, grounded. You, you can't tell a poker player when they're playing. I mean, they're, they're grounded, they're solid, they're secure. Where Aries is more impulsive and fiery and wants to show off, Capricorn is chill, cold. So you might take personal criticism to these hard conversation. And brothers and sisters, please, if anyone out there listening to my messages here, that is a sign. If you cannot sit and listen to hard conversation or think somebody's boundaries are personally attacking you or believe that if somebody says no or points something out about your behavior that they immediately hate you, there's your problem. This entire world is built on such defensiveness, such personal criticism when somebody needs to speak about a hard topic. And frankly, it's getting old. But I, I do have compassion to a certain degree because I know a lot of you listeners, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. A lot of you beautiful listeners are, um, you know, come out of trauma and abuse and you have a lot of that reaction, reactive abuse left in you, which is a borderline state, brothers and sisters. Reactive abuse is borderline, not a personality disorder, but you exhibit all the identical traits of a borderline personality disorder, which is also known as a secondary psychopath. So brothers and sisters, let's just, this will be the main message. When somebody's having a hard conversation with you or pointing something out that you're doing in infringing their boundaries, their sacred space, their values, their needs, their feelings, you don't even like when you disagree, you take it personally. That's reactive abuse that's a borderline state or maybe you maybe narcissistic personality disorder i don't know who's listening here but if you find yourself personally feeling criticized rejected abandoned punished lied about lied to or blamed you need to talk to somebody about it brothers and sisters so uncle jupiter he's coming down the chimney do you know do you know if it's going to be Uncle Jupy delivering the presents? Or is it going to be, you know, Christmas Krampus coming down your chimney? I don't know. It's going to be a very unique Christmas time. How are you doing, brothers and sisters? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Thank you for my 19 minute and 40 second introduction, astrologically wise. So anyway, I thought we'd do a little bit of tarot. I got a new little deck of tarot cards, and I thought they were quite interesting. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, brothers and sisters. A little mini deck. Um, 
let me get on live stream. If anybody's got questions for their sun, moon, or rising, just type it in capital letters. Direct questions only. I'll give you your astrology for all aspects I just talked about. And um, if you have any questions regarding love, sex, or money, please type them in capital letters. Direct questions only. No medical questions, please, brothers and sisters. And any sloppy questions, you know, whatever state of recovery you're in, not about your ex or the partner or the person, but about yourself and how to navigate through. I'll be glad to help you. If I can't help you, I'll direct you to book a session or have tons of rescue resources I could direct you to. So let's get started. This is called the New Visions Tarot. It's a little itty bitty deck. And it's really a very interesting deck because it's done all of the Rider Waite cards from a different perspective. From the perspective of um, like uh, Pixie, what's her name? Pixie Coleman. Sorry, I should have known that. <laughs> Pixie Coleman's images kind of reversed, like so you can see the perspective backwards. It's really cool. So I'm just going to start with a collective. If somebody wants to timestamp, I'll give you a free reading. If you timestamp uh, for the collective 21 minutes, 32 seconds, I'll give you a free reading. And all you got to do is timestamp for me, brothers and sisters. All right, so let's start with the collective here. And I am on live stream if anybody's got questions, all right? So let's get started. Guardians, goodness, grace, truth, and virtue. Can we have some messages? Hold on, let me see. I forgot something. Let me see something. Let me see if I got it here. Oh, I must have it in my other box. Shoot. Yeah, this really cool little deck that asks questions. All right, let's start again. Guardians, goodness, grace, truth, and virtue. Can we have some overall energy for the collective? Let's see, that's too many, too many here. We've got the fool. Let's, let's use these. Overall energy. we got the fool, Uranus, Aries. We got the card of Leo, six of broads, and we got the queen of swords, air signs. What is this overall energy? People are going to be talking some very cold, distinct, direct talk and demanding reciprocity to iron out the Capricornian problems to love, sex, and money. An authoritative, communicative, Capricorn badass, even though this is an air card, will speak a sort of truth, will demand that you sit down and talk, that you speak openly, that you speak directly. And again, the healthiest relationships, brothers and sisters, are ones that speak difficult, difficult topics with one another. Because guess what? That's how you resolve conflict and grow closer. You know, usually, she's faced the other way. This is Queen, yeah. She's faced the other way. Now she wants to sit and talk. Let's sit and chinny chat. I don't have my back to you. You know, I want to sit and make sure this relationship is worthy. I want to sit down and make sure we can both resolve these conflicts together. I want to make sure even if we can agree to disagree. I want to make sure that we're going to equally respect one another and equally share Responsibility is a very responsible card. It speaks directly. Can you speak directly? Or do you get defensive? If it's this way, you'll get defensive. So, Queen of Swords is testing her relationships at the dinner table. And they'll either be one of two things. They'll be receptive. They'll be rewarding. They'll be peaceful. They'll be enlightening. They'll take a lot of work to talk things out and to feel very victorious. But this queen also realizes when somebody doesn't meet respect, long-term commitment, tradition, 
building legacies together, honesty. When somebody doesn't meet those very simple, basic human rights, they know that their best chance to endure is to walk away from a relationship that does not have the mutual receptivity. To walk away and start over on their own and not look back. That's the victory in becoming individuated and strong and not afraid to speak hard conversations, to talk things out or to determine whether it is or is not a healthy relationship to remain in. A lot of people are terrified to leave terrible relationships that are dishonest and don't respect boundaries. And I mean, I've been there too a long time ago, but honestly, a lot of people are terrified. Terrified. Let me keep these cards out. Terrified to leave horrible relationships that are dishonest, that can't be honest, that can't respect boundaries, that can't respect needs, feelings, that can't even agree to disagree, that you continually have to speak the same thing over and over again because somebody's gaslighting your ass. People are terrified to leave and start over and walk away because they know it takes, you know, maybe six long months or six long years or, I don't know, six different transit cycles to renew oneself again from toxic people bottom of the deck eight of pentacles a lot of people work so hard to hold on to unhealthy relationships dishonest disrespectful relationships they really try to believe with all their sword that they can change the person that they can get the person to admit when they're wrong that they can get the person to be honest, that they can get the person to be respectful, and then it'll be a victorious relationship and it'll feel all brand new. It's not the way it works, brothers and sisters. You cannot change people. You have to look for patterns. You have to look for patterns that you're, you know, you're being met with the same type of resistance, the same type of um, lack of disrespect. The same type of over and over. I'm repeating the same thing over and over. I'm tired of saying, no, it has nothing personally to do with you. I still love you. I just don't like that behavior. So if you're finding yourself repeating over and over and you've been in a long-term relationship and you believe that they're going to change, you're turning the back, your back on yourself. I think you've sniffed the white lotus a little too much. You're carrying a bag of shit. And you're headed back to try and try and try again. You know, the thing with relationships like this, brothers and sisters, is... When you get into fights or have this resistance or disrespect or pummeled boundaries or lies even or gaslighting and then it's not resolved and then you have a, a moment or a few days or maybe even a few weeks of goodness, you know, where it's fun and romantic and it feels lighthearted and foolish and it feels really yummy. Maybe you're having really good sex. I'll tell you what, that's called intermittent reinforcement because when it goes back to the disrespectful cycle and back to the fun cycle, it's like riding a unicycle and you become entrained and trauma bonded to the individual that way. And it makes it harder and harder and harder and harder and harder and harder to leave. And that's why many of us will um, be survivors of long-term relationships, long-term marriages. To an abusive husband or wife or a biological family thereof. It's an intermittent reinforcement that forms a trauma bond. When you believe you can change that person or get them to be honest and things really just kind of get pushed under the rug and then you have a little bit of fun and then it goes back to silent treatment and then you have a little bit of fun and then it goes back to, hmm, something don't feel right. Why were you late again, babe? Oh, that, that, that excuse doesn't feel good. Oh, you're too sensitive. Oh, I was only joking. 
and you go back to the fun and this intermittent reinforcement forms a trauma bond. Very, 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 very difficult to leave. And the more difficult it becomes to leave, the more you insist that you can get the truth out of people like that. The more you think you can solve problems for people like that. It's a horrible trap. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Really cool to see you. We're having a hailstorm here in the northeastern side of the United States. My school is closed today, tomorrow, and all through, to, through Monday. So I'm going to try to come on for Christmas. What else do we have here? So this back and forth thing, these small victories... A lot of times where you're not solving problems about your serious, committed, long-term relationship, and then you go and have fun, you yourself as the victim um, often forget those problems until they come up again, and then you try to solve them again, and you try to speak truthfully about it again, you try to speak directly about it again, maybe try to speak a little softer this time, a little louder this time, a little more passive aggressive this time a little more i don't know in your face you try all these different ways and nothing gets solved and you still go right back to the fun of things you know now it's like turning your back on a new story jupiter ingressing into aries is rewriting your whole new story and closing out those soul contracts. A lot of people are so hesitant, though. Four of Pentacles. This is the card of Capricorn. So hesitant of closing out old stories. Making the same excuses. Holding firm. Not going out for help. Not asking for help. Just sitting, waiting, longing, yearning, begging, hoping, waiting. It'll change while you're going through this up and down roller coaster. And that is not a fool's journey. That's a foolish journey. You know, a lot of times people are waiting for somebody else to come and save them. Or for their abusive, neglectful, gaslighting partner that's romantic and sexy as fuck sometimes, you know, come and save them and make them stable. A lot of borderlines are with narcissists for that very reason. The borderline uses the narcissist to maintain and regulate their emotions <laughs> And the narcissist uses the borderline um, the, the same way to just objectify and replay their childhood trauma through through the partner. So both both parties real stubborn about change, about um, a willingness you know, to speak the sort of truth, a willingness to leave the partnership, to uh, an, an unwillingness to start over because it's hard work. And they don't see they don't see the victory parade at the end of the at the end of recovery. Bottom of the deck, the tower. There we go. Mars, Uranus. I remember being there, brothers and sisters, in that intermittent reinforcement with an exe that I really thought would change. After 20-something years, and boy, it came a tumbling down. I lost everything. Exy ran away with my home, my dollar dollars, all my cars and trucks, my identity, which was the weirdest thing to see. And he was already hooked up with his new partner in, how's her encased in the tower now? So, that's what we go through, brothers and sisters. It's a long, hard, pressing, painful nightmarish experience to undo a trauma bond but in order to have a fresh start to have to have a fresh start to learn your logic to learn how to see clearly to have a such a clear perception of things that has nothing to do with emotional um reasoning that you can fix satan or lucifer The universe will throw you right out and shake a bitch up and you'll cry and moan and blow, groan the blues, moan and groan the blues and blame everything on the other partner, rightfully so with a lot of torment that happens 
they go off so smug and victorious with the next partner while you're all broken and in despair. You know, a, a wreck. But, uh, you know, the fool's journey, the hero's journey. After six months, six transits, six years, you're a whole different individual. Speaking that sort of truth. Emotion does not get in your way in making logical, precise, accurate, truthful decisions. And you're very grounded in that. And when you're faced with chaotic situations, you know how to cut through the bullshit and come out victorious. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Anybody going to say something? Let me know where you are in the world. Let me know what your questions are. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, just be careful out there why Mars is still retrograding. Lots of accidents. Um, I just met, met, I didn't really meet the couple, but I met, I know of a couple through a person I know through one of my schools. She, she knows a couple that had their whole house burned down. So they're looking for donations, house burnings, um, electrical problems, car accidents, lots of fights. Um, Mars in Gemini retrograde is a very duplicitous, accident prone place to be. You know, it's stumbling into things. It's not feeling very secure. There's a lot of mind games. It's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of, um, stress, a lot of anxiety. Um, you know, and I know on this side of the world that I'm in, it's fucking freezing cold out. I collected my first, <laughs> Jupiter Aries snow of the year early this morning. Um, but you know, it's a lot of uh a lot of unexpected accidents and breakdowns and storms. Um devil on the bottom here that wanted to come out. The demons, the demonstrations of the demons, strations, strations. Yeah, house, house is burning. That earthquake in Florida, 6.4 Richter earthquake in Northern California. All the droughts in, I think, the Mississippis. Um, all the floods over in Uganda. I mean, the world is really shaken, shaken up. All of these disaster cycles with this. Solar flares and the magnetic pole shifting. You know, we're in some seriously crazy times. That you got to be a prepper. you got to be a prepper and ready. I've been trying to prep you guys since 2019. Hopefully you're prepped. Ready to go and have all your bug out bags and gear in order. Um, and know exactly what's going to be taking place. And if you don't, brothers and sisters, just hook up with my brother Ben. Over at Suspicious Observers, you could book a one-on-one -on -one with him. You could join his open Q&As. He had a badass one today. Um, and he'll let you know. He's also got a great disaster list so you can understand and get prepared. Get prepared for Fukushima events of proportions that are beyond our control out in the heavens. Let alone what's happening over in Ukraine of Russia. Doesn't feel like a very loving Christmas, right? We want all of our wishes to come true. Nine of Cups, Ace of Cups reversed. Forms the Ten of Cups together, right? But it doesn't feel very loving. It kind of feels, uh, I don't know. Feels like you're looking to get full. You're looking to have a feast. You're looking to have the best Christmas presents. You're looking to have the best life, the best relationships, the best love, sex, and money. You know, but it doesn't feel good. It might feel empty. It kind of reminds me of that ancient artifact they found that they suspect is like 2.8 billion years old. It's like nine, nine little cups, and they all 
fill this one cup. They suspect it's from Mu, M-U, or Atlant the beyond Atlantean days, in the days of Mu. Kind of reminds me of that. We're closing out cycles that don't feel good, that we have expectations of people. I should do a video on narcissistic gift giving. <laughs> It feels like a narcissistic gift-giving kind of Christmas where you're either robbed of joy, purposefully not given presents while you watch other people get lavished, or you're given these really bizarre cups full of what they think is cheer, but is really a sneer. That's far from loving. It feels like that. Time to close those cycles out. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Can you say something? Let me know you're in the room. If you have any questions, type them in capital letters. Direct questions only. No medical questions, please. And if you want your astrology, just drop your sun, moon, and rising down. Oh, no, brothers and sisters. It's kind of strange. And I ain't talking Dr. Strange either. Let me get on live stream. Anybody asking questions? Nobody yet? Come on, brothers and sisters. If you find that you can't, if I'm not seeing, if you're typing and I'm not seeing your question, it means you're blocked and you shouldn't be here. And for all of you that linger and just watch without saying anything, I just want to ask you, why? Why do you come and watch? Say something. Let me know your presence is here. If you're honest, I'm going to speak a Capricorn sort of truth and ask, what are you doing here? What do you want from me? What do you want to ask? Or what are you afraid to ask? Why are you afraid to say anything? Why do you redundantly, repetitively come over to my channel over and over and over again and just remain silent? Is it because you're blocked? Is it because you don't accept no as an answer? Is it because you have zero respect for my boundaries, needs, feelings, or safety? Cat, girl, thank you for chiming in, girl. Thank you for being a badass and saying something because, man, girl, this gets frustrating. Right now with my natal chart, too. Oh, girl. Listen, though, you're, you should be feeling a little bit better, though. Right? With Jupiter out of Pisces right now. I know 29 degrees is a hard degree. That's an anoretic degree. That's a real hard position to have anything at those degrees in your chart. I, I'm, my heart's with you, Kat, because I know you're a Cancer Krabby Patty. And you're, you know, I got devil on the bottom of the deck, girl. You know, look at this card. Isn't it wild how they're all back-faced instead of front-faced? You know, these are things we can easily get ourselves out of. It just takes courage. Right? It takes courage to even start. You need the courage to, to really, you don't even have to break the chain. You just got to lift them off your neck. But it really takes courage to walk the hero's journey. It's not easy, girl. Thank you for speaking up, too, because it gets monotonous in here sometimes, cat. You know, it's made me question whether I should just leave this channel entirely and utilize my other channels. Oh, th thank you. Ka chaotic control. Nice to see you back, brother. I thought that was Cat. I'm so sorry. Thank you both for chiming in. I can't tell you how frustrating it gets to, to me. It doesn't, they don't get to me, but it gets frustrating because I don't know if, the stuff I do here online is even worth it for anybody to to ingest or even utilize because most of my listeners tend to be exes and stalkers. So it's made me question whether I should just open up my other channels and go there, but well, I don't know. It's annoying to have a natal chart like mine. That's why I'm in the business I am because I deal with this. How are you guys doing, Cat and Chaotic Control? I love your name, Chaotic Control. I thought you were Coetic and <laughs> Control when you came in last time, which wouldn't be a bad thing. 
I'm a Freighter Xavier fan myself. He makes fun of EA, but we won't go there. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I respect EA. I wouldn't want to fuck with EA. We'll never fuck with EA. Let Freighter Xavier fuck with EA. <laughs> All right, brothers and sisters, what else we got? Four of Cups reverse. These are opportunities coming to us to have these talks. I just learned a new star in uh, Chinese astrology. I knew I should have written it down. Flying something. It's not Pegasus, but man, it's a good luck star. A lot of people aren't seeing the luck and the fortune and the self-preservation, the self-respect, the strategy, the, the regulatory needs of Capricorn by having difficult conversations with people. You know, difficult conversations are hard, brothers and sisters. They're not fun. But afterwards, they solve the problem. The problem is solved, and you go on to a newer, brighter, more conducive, more successful, more fulfilling, more grounded place. And the tenth cup turns up. But a lot of people, they don't want to pay attention to them. I'll get the name of that star. I just watched uh, Master Joey. I can't remember his last name. He's a famous Chinese astrologer. And I'm sorry, brothers and sisters. I only watched for the year of the snake because it's all about entrepreneurs having a badass next year. If anybody is a year of the snake and wants to collaborate with me, let me know. I've got a cup I'm offering you right here, right now, to benefit both of us in an entrepreneurial, prosperous venture. Hit me up, brothers and sisters. Anybody have any questions so far? Having an 11th house stellium ain't easy. Well, chaotic control. I fully, fully get it, right? I'm an 11th house stellium if I run my chart in placidus, and I'm a 12th house stellium if I run it in whole sign. I understand the 11th house stellium. Thank you, I assume brother, right? And it's a little expensive because the regular science version is like 32 bucks. Um, and I just found it by accident. I thought it would be a, a better look into the tarot. But anyway, the 11th house stellium, brother, chaotic control. If, I'm, if you're not a brother, correct me, okay? I live that, right? That's the 11th house of Aquarius, right? That's the 11th house of groups and social media and networking and, you know, really telling your story to a large group, to a public, to be an authority, to be a humanitarian, to be an advocate. Um, not to be outcasted and, and being ahead of your time in that 11th house. I don't know what planet you have in that stellium. I guarantee it's probably like Pluto. <laughs> You're Pluto or Uranus 11th house stellium. It's fucking weird. I get it. What planets do you have there? Chaotic control. And you said Pisces, right? Is it, where's your, oh, you're a Pisces rising. 29 degree Pisces rising. That's got to be frustrating as fuck because people might misconstrue you to be um, not really sure of who you are. You know, either, I don't know, I'd like to know a little bit more before I go digging deeper here. Let me know. Kat, how are you holding up? How are your little chilies holding up through all this? I know you got... I know you got a couple of children with some hard transits hit, hitting too, with you as a cancer in that house. Let's see what else we got. I have Uranus, Neptune, and Jupiter in Aquarius. Yes, I get misunderstood a lot. I don't, I get it. On a big level, you probably do, right? Chaotic control, you probably get misunderstood on a huge level. In fact, groups all 
I'll chastise you. Do they do that group think on you? Good. I'm glad they're doing well, goddess. Glad to hear that. Uranus, Neptune, and Jupiter. Neptune and Jupiter in that 11th house. That must have been hard on you. When you get attacked by groups, it must feel horrible. It must feel like a bunch of sociopaths attacking you. Do you find humor now? I bet you could find a great amount of sarcastic humor in a groupthink setting. Oh, I'd, I'd love to know how you handle that as an Aquarius. Uh, I bet you're funny as fuck around groups that try to annihilate you. <laughs> 11 house stelliums are weird though. You know what's weird about 11 house stelliums too? Chaotic control. Like when you're having the most fucked up thing happen, I get ganged up a lot. I'm usually the sarcastic one. Excellent. We get along great. The thing about the 11th house stellium that I notice is you could be having like something so fucked up happen, right? And I could, I could equate it to a little video I think I did last year on the crazy life of an 11th house stellium where we were getting this massive nor'easter snowstorm and I kept shoveling, shoveling my fucking truck out. And it, oh, I shoveled it out so good, brother, chaotic control. And the moment I shoveled it out and I was getting ready to go into my truck to go out, the fucking snow plow came in and just plowed my truck all the way back in after, after shoveling it out, like for the last number of hours. And I was like, all right, I'm not going to get upset. You know, this is the crazy life of an 11th house stellium. <laughs> and I thought, okay, what are the positive things? I got great exercise. You know, I'm really strong for my age. You know, I was 56 at the time. I'm fucking strong. I can handle a shovel. I'm a motherfucker. I got a badass truck. I handled the snowstorm. I caught some great icicles for war water as well last year, cat. If you want some of my magical fucking badass waters for your magical potions and I thought about all these wonderful things right and so I went to go out and shovel what the snow plow had plowed me in and this fucking truck pulls up to me and like I don't know four gorgeous fucking sexy badass guys got out and they all shoveled my truck out for me and then I sat around with four delicious guys and had hot cocoa with them so that's the crazy life of an 11th house stellium. Chaotic control. I tend to run my chart in a whole sign, so I, I'm more of a 12th house stellium, um, which brings me more inwardly advanced. You might want to try to run your chart in a different house system and see how it feels there. Because it'll play both ways, and you'll be like, oh... That's why I get attacked in groups a lot and ganged up a lot. They don't like how badass I am. They're intimidated by the badassery. I'd love to know your experience, though. When something fucked up happens, does something really cool happen through the fuckery? I love it. In whole sign, a 12th house stellium. Yeah, it's so different, right? The 12th house stellium with Jupiter... Neptune, you're probably super psychic, super intuitive, right? Super, super uh, drawn in that you don't want to expose your secrets to the wrong fuck nuts, right? You know when to hold in. You love being outcasted, so do I. We're in the club together. We're the, we're the group of misfit toys. <laughs> I was just saying that yesterday. Um, yeah, 12th house. Neptune and Jupiter, you're probably super fucking psychic. You probably get a lot of those piranhas in the spiritual movements, too. The light workers probably biting at you like little piranhas. Um, but you're super psychic, super funny, super truthful, super spiritual, like super on steroids spiritual, <laughs> super maybe esoteric drop down fucking badass. Um, and with Uranus there, you're probably a super fucking magical magi. Mm, 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 yum. They have an unorthodox way of thinking. 
It's hard for people to really grasp me for some reason. Well, you know what, chaotic control? I think it's hard for people to grasp the truth. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I think it's hard for people to grasp logic. I think it's hard for people to grasp individuality. I think it's hard for people to grasp that you disagree with a group think tank. That's what it's hard. Every, everyone thinks I'm unpredictable. I love being unpredictable. That's badass. I gotta see what you look like. Probably hot. Sexy. That Neptune, Jupiter, probably super juicy, sexy. And truth probably means a lot. And when you speak truth, I bet you, I did a read, you might want to go listen to my All Signs Part 2 video. I did an awesome Aquarius reading, which would pertain to you because when an Aquarius rages the fuck out, like you have to push our buttons so much, right? Because I'm an Aquarius moon and I have an 11th house stellium. I'll tell you what, brother, when people push and poke me too much, I rage out like um, I'm cold, right? Aquarius is cold and detached, unemotional. So when you get pissed at somebody that's been poking the alien, well, we, we speak so alien that you'd think we were like some kind of I don't know, just some some alien predator, right? And we will ream you out like no human being has ever reamed a bitch out. That's the cool thing about Aquarius. We're, we're smart. We see through a lot of stuff when we're clear, when we're not emotional. And we will ream somebody out like no human being has ever reamed that person out. They will be reamed beyond recognition. We'll mortify people. We love... We, Love to mortify the narcissist when the narcissist pokes too much. We will let the narcissist poke, though. We'll let the narcissist poke. But the narcissist does not know how to read our social cues, right? Or, or us being disinterested or, dis, or indifferent or just ignoring them. They don't know how to read the signs. So they poke one too many times. And we just have to say one simple thing that mortifies the living shit out of them. And it's like no human being. Oftentimes, groups don't understand that either too, brother, right? That's justice for you. Mm, mm, mm. See how this looks, justice. Very interesting. I should have really looked at these cards. Look at this card, pretty wild. Like uh, they don't think we see what's going on behind our back. Don't fuck with an 11th house stellium or a 12th house stellium. We know what the fuck's going on, especially with Neptune, Jupiter, Uranus in a 12th house stellium. They think they might be able to fool the scales of justice, Daddy Saturn. They think they might be able to steal from us too, right, brother? Mm -mm. Always come back and smack a bitch up. Love it. I don't think they realize when it's coming, which is the greatest part. Yeah, it was a pretty funny reading, brother. You might enjoy that. It's to the video before this one. Do you guys have any questions? Kat, I'm glad your little cubbies are, are doing good and not getting too affected by the astrology. That's wonderful. How are you doing, girl? How are you managing? I'm contemplating if I should go to a friend's house. They are such a horn dog. Should I go? Well, um, what's your sun sign, brother? And what sun, moon, and rising is the horn dog? I'll let you know. Are you starved of sex? Maybe a little horn dogging would be fun. Um, are they somebody that if you go have horny fun with, are they going to get 
you know, stuck to you like that codependent glue and not leave you alone. You know, maybe we need to do a cost analysis for you to see what the pros are of going, what the cons are of going, what the pros are of not going, and what the cons are of not going are. Cost analysis is done in four segments and talked about it a couple of videos ago. Helps you make good decisions. I'm contemplating if I should go to a friend's house. A friend's with benefits, it sounds like. Horn dog. Let me know what sun, what sun, moon, and rising. And know what rising you are. Pisces, right? Pisces rising. What's your sun? What's your moon? And what's their sun, moon, and rising? We'll let you know. We're breaking old contracts, though, brothers and sisters. We're breaking old soul contracts, right? We're breaking old soul contracts. They are kind of clingy now since we have had that encounter. All right. So there's your answer. If they want more than what you can give, don't go to Horn Doggy's house. She's going to be in puppy love with the sexy, shiny stel Aquarius stellium, right? Um, you know, and also remember if it's something that you're only utilizing to satisfy your gains that are like of a selfish Jupiter Aries at that zero, whatever it is, zero degrees and I don't know, four seconds, whatever it is right now. If it's a selfish thing, it's not going to be rewarding and it comes back and bitch smacks you, you know? And it's not fair to her. Because it sounds like you've had a sexy encounter with horn puppy. I can't call her a horn dog, him or her. And, you know, puppy puppies cling. Puppies need owners. And you don't want to be Pavlov and have a puppy to train. You know, you're a shiny alien nerd in that stellium. That would be my answer, but I teach moral law. You know, you're going to ultimately make your own decision. <laughs> you know, I'm, I teach moral law, brother. That's my <laughs> tarot birth card. The tarot birth cards are the justice card and the high priestess. And I teach moral law. So, <laughs> I would say, don't let puppy dog either. Don't let the puppy tell you she's not interested in a relationship. Because if puppies are clingy, that means they're looking for some kind of ownership. I'm all about having fun, you know. I truly am. But people that are, are there openly having fun and have no commitment to each other. Or if you want a clean, clingy puppy and you're ready to get in a relationship and you know the sex was good then maybe consider having a long talk a capricornian respectful long-term committed talk to talk about what your needs are versus what her need him or her because i don't know if he's a he or she um or you're a he or she you know and being honest it's going to prove to you how honest and integritous you are difficult conversations make the best bonds they make healthy dogs grow up. They don't make puppies cling. They make puppies know who their rightful owners are. Or if you need to send them to the pound, you know, to get a rightful owner. That was a good question, though. You know, I always say anytime you're really confused is to roll it off a non-biased person. That means not your friend, not your family, not your lover, not your coworker, not your boss. An unbiased person. So coming to a stranger, right, is easy to talk to a stranger or, or a coach or a counselor that should, should be unbiased. Um, and if you don't have that, to do what's called a cost analysis. I'm going to call you brother, chaotic, chaotic control. So a cost analysis is like a four-sectioned thing. You just, you know, write the pros and cons of doing the first two boxes and of not doing the second two boxes and then you make your analysis. I'm a he. I love strangers. So do I. <laughs> I have some of the best interactions with strangers, don't you? 
I think Aquarius love that. I have a strong Aquarius moon in the fourth house with fucking Lilith. Dark moon Lilith there. <laughs> uh, can you tell by the way I laugh? Yeah. Besides Aqua, like you're detached to begin with, right? With all that 11th house stellium. You know, you probably want the right partner that enhances your shiny alienness and that Pisces of I can't imagine how difficult that is because oh my god, I'm not I don't know where your son is, but with that stellium, there's a lot of power there, right? So the big power of Aquarius is so opposite of your ascendant 29 degrees Pisces. It's like dealing with detachment and somebody that wants to be attached and you just can't make a conclusive decision because they're so opposing. Oh, Lord, you're a Scorpio rising. No, I'm not a Scorpio rising at all, brother. Mm -mm. No, I'm a Mars and Scorpio. Mm -mm. Mars and Scorpio. Badass in the courtroom and the bedroom. Mars and Scorpio. Um, I'm a Virgo sun, Libra rising, and aqua moon in tropical. I'm a Leo sun stellium in Vedic. Um... I can't remember my rising, that stupid brain injury. I want to say Virgo rising and Capricorn moon in my Vedic. Rahu K2 in Taurus Scorpio in my Vedic and Gemini Sag as my north and south node in my tropical. I have a lot of judicial placements in my chart. Libra rising though, brother. Libra rising. Can't you tell, like, with all my makeup and, and uh, hair colors and, you know, we I like to dress. I am kind of looking Scorpio, though, right? We have a Mars in Scorpio, so you have a Libra rising. My Venus is in Libra. My Venus is in Libra in Vedic. No, sorry. My Venus is in Libra in Tropical. My Venus is in Scorpio in Vedic. Deep and sexy. Where's your Chiron? Where's your Chiron chaotic control? I have a progressed Chiron in Aries. Chiron in Pisces. Hardcore. Painful. It'll make you progress Chiron in Aries, though. Thank God I'm not a Scorpio rising or a Scorpio moon. No offense to any Scorpios out there. Maybe. Maybe a little bit. Chiron conjunct Mars in Scorpio. Ow. Dude, you need to talk to somebody who's brilliant, who's deep, who's funny as fuck, who's direct, and who shares that so you feel safe expressing because I bet you can't express your deepness your deep fears insecurities vulnerabilities with anybody that's frustrating I bet all the Pisces would listen to you <laughs> uh, love learning about astrology I'm just a faux astrologer I kind of took time off from astrology school that was getting a little monotonous human behavior is my favorite subject I'm working on a certification in body language right now what else is going on I keep losing my space here My friend's a Pisces. <laughs> there you go. Enjoy. Be careful with those Pisces. A lot of Pisces, females, brother God, they want strong people to take care of them. And they're very clingy. They're like fish flopping out of water without Aquaman. Oh, they'll pretend they don't want Aquaman because they think if they do whatever Aquaman says then Aquaman will eventually want them. 
aqua shiny alien man, not the aqua underwater man, because I don't know if Pisces could truly handle an Aquarius. I know one of the, I have a Pisces friend and she can't fucking stand how um, solution based I am because she'll repeat the same old problems over and over and over and over and over, and over, and over, and over again. And you'll give advice and solutions and examples and she'll, I mean, she'll come and ask, but she'll never do it. She wants somebody to do it for her. Have fun with your Pisces, stinky, smelly, fishy. All right, brother God. Cool to meet you. Thanks for popping in. All right. What else are we going to do here? <clears throat> Anybody have plans for whatever Christmas Day is? I have a big feast planned with lamb. All the fixings with lamb. Let me see if I can keep that open that way. Two of cups on the bottom of the deck. We are going to have a little bit of a period with some trine energy with Venus, Uranus, and the north node, the nodes of fate, where it's going to feel dreamy and luscious and yummy. And mer the Mercury um, ability to communicate effectively. It'll be brief, but it'll be there. You might even, I don't know what side of the world you're on. It's about 8.30 here on the East Coast. It should You should be feeling like that right about now, where chaotic control is heading over to his Pisces to maybe go have a little Venus time. Be a good time to do it right now. Princess of Pentacles. Page of Pentacles. We're trying new things. You know, we want things to build. We have these ideas in our head. Full speed, Jupiter ahead, right? In Aries. We have our ideas. We have our strategies. We have our things we want to take in action. We want them to come to fruition. And it's going to feel very stagnant. It's going to feel very slow. It's going to feel very... Almost stopped with Mars retrograde right now, brothers and sisters. Just expect that. Expect things not to go at a pace that Aries is comfortable with. It's going to go more of a pace where it feels sluggish because Mars is is squaring with Neptune. It's going to feel still. It's going to feel muddy. It's going to feel like quicksand in a lot of ways. Four of Swords going to feel like you want to go back and retreat and rework things and reanalyze and redo and replan and re-strategize and realign. Remove some of the things that are weighting you down and stopping you. Three of Pentacles. People are hungry for the collaborative effort of other people. Um, and actually, it's a really good time to start working new partnerships with your plans. And a lot of us have gone through cycles where we thought we were building in one direction and we were like, wait, halt. Let me take these Jupiter Neptune goggles off, these rose colored glasses off and maybe go in a completely different direction. Don't feel bad that that's happened. It might have even shocked you. And then once it hit you, you were like, oh, why didn't I see this earlier? This fits me so much better. I'm going through that right now. And on the side note of things, you know, making underground connections, not ready to announce them. Don't announce them, friends and family. Don't announce your plans. It's a little secret of magic, too. Don't announce your plans unless you want the tower to come and knock shit out. Knock the power out. I've learned that lesson the hard way. The hardest way. I bet Kat, you have too, working with magic. 
There's so many rules and laws to magic, but once you get the foundations down, you're like, no wonder, no wonder I was missing that foundational sword. Do not tell your plans. Keep them safe. Keep them to yourself. You remember all the lessons you've learned to get that stability. To know who and who not to collaborate with. That will spin your wheels of fortune. Or spin you in a wheel and take your fortune. I've learned, Kat, you've probably witnessed that in my old career. Announcing things to the public of Facebook and big Facebook. I don't know how many people I had on that Facebook page. I'd make the mistake of announcing my plans or syllabus or something. And then some fucker would come and have the identical thing. Mm-mm. That got old. Keep your plans to yourself. Slow and steady wins the race. You meet the right collaborative people that you reality test everything with and have hard conversations. Ask hard questions. But when you meet somebody for the first time, brothers and sisters... Your first encounter will tell a lot. <coughs> Who's doing the talking? That's why I quit social media. Me too, girl. You and I have a lot in common, though. Right? And that was such a beautiful thing, meeting you that one day and learning how much we've had in common. That we sort of follow the same energy cycle, right? Right through our young years and everything. Oh, there goes my goosebumps. Can you see my hair standing up, girl? Look at my hair standing up. So when you first meet a potential partner for love, sex, and money, for those who are seasoned and experienced people in that four of swords position, we know to take things slow. Like the page of pentacles, princess of pentacles. We know to reality test. We know... When we first meet anyone, even in a large group of people, we know who does all the talking. And that will determine what kind of relationship you have. So when, when I was a sloppy codependent and I went into groups of people or met new people, I would be the one doing all the talking, all the asking, all the wanting, yearning, begging, wishing, longing, hoping. To get a response back. But now, when I collaborate with someone, our first meeting is me not doing a lot of talking. In fact, the very first rule of communication, nobody ever answered it correctly. But the very first rule of communication is listening. Listening. Because if you give too much away and you don't listen and you talk too much... You might just be facing the devil itself. And you might give all of your strategy away, all of your vulnerability away, all of your weaknesses away, all of your strengths away. Aren't these cards beautiful, Cat? I love the imagery on it. Girl, I think you were in my room last time. My right hand, my right palm was itchy. This might be for you. So you might be coming into like a lump sum of money or some kind of lump luck. Um, especially with Jupiter ingressing into Aries, you know, bringing you rewards. I can't promise you how it's going to come though because luck and lump sums of money often come often come sometimes when in, in you know inheritance like a will or something somebody passes away i don't know if that's for you or something somebody looking for luck lady luck or waiting for a lump sum of money to come in my hands itchy for you yeah social media girl i haven't been on in a while um, I think since around April when I had that 
well, I still have that stalker. The local stalker. The local stalker who works for human resources and helps all kinds of women and children find housing. Stalking my ass. Yeah, I closed my social media down. Queen of Cups. Rightfully so. Emotionally sound. This queen has been through a lot. She's been drowned. She's been ruined. She's been destroyed. She's been persecuted. She's been lied about. She's been lied to. And she had to pull herself through and learn every bit of reason why. She had to learn every emotion she held in herself and had to learn to be okay feeling those emotions, that betrayal, that pain. And she's grown strong too. Real strong. I got a band across my head. Brothers and sisters, thank you for joining me. It's nice to see you all. Welcome on in. Say hello. If you're brave, if you have nothing to hide, you'll say something. You know, Brian, I was thinking about you the other night. If you're on my channel, brother, I told you you ain't allowed to be here because you put me in danger. You know, whoever is not talking, whoever is, is hiding behind a profile, whoever's received a no, stop, leave me alone, or a cease and desist, or whoever's trying to comment and I can't read your comments, it means you're not supposed to be here. It's exhausting. Six of Rods again. I pulled it on that little deck too. The Six of Rods upright and the tower. Pulling the same thing. You ain't going to get no victory out of me. You can stalk and stalk and stalk all you want. My FBI team's got you all labeled. Every bits of you. Your IPs, the date, the time, and everything. It gets fucking annoying. You're pests. You're like mosquitoes. The moon hiding shit. You think you're too swift that we can't see through your bullshit. Well, when you work with master magicians like Kat and myself, don't think we can't feel your shady shit or know your shady shit. You're just little night riders coming to knock us off our chariot. Well, we know the left and the right, the yin and the yang, the red and the blue, the month and the Venus. We know the Joaquim and the Boaz, and we know how to put you on the magic carpet and send you a fucking flying. I ain't lying. Six of Pentacles, lower octave of the Justice card. <laughs> with the High Priestess, you're fucking around with shit you don't want to fuck around with. Mm, you're Seven of Swords, you're all the same. It's all in vain. Cat, I might get offline because I just get so exhausted with these. People that don't take no for an answer. Capricorn sister-in-law. Fucking niece Scorpio. Dotsy Scorpio. Fucking bios and exy saggies and whatever replacement mini me. It gets fucking exhausting with these people coming in. I can't wait for the day in the court. But girl, why I'm here online, it's annoying as fuck. Is it's ruining my time with you. And uh, I'm going to end it. They, do, they think they're here to steal my... You know when people hate you for being happy? Or hate you for being successful? Or hate you that you have a happy life without them? There's something wrong with that kind of person. When they have the stalk and gawk and they're cowards... And they hate that I'm happy or anybody here on my channel who's happy. If somebody hates you because you're happy, they're fucking wax. They're wax. Mu they belong in a wax museum. They don't know how to make decisions for themselves. So they come and try to destroy everybody else's dreams and wishes and goodness. And you know what I say to that girl? I wave the magic fucking wand and say, bye fucking bye, coward. You ain't nothing. You're caught in your own web of deceit, eight of swords. I'll give you Lucifer's card right here, the two of rods right now, Lucifer and Mercury. 
Not you, cat. Sorry, girl. And uh, you little night riders who think you're going to come in and stab me and swarm me and hurt me and do some harmful action against me, maybe triangulate gaslight, gaslight and smear or whatever. Go ahead. What ebbs? I've left you out in the cold a long time ago. I've become a motherfucking attorney. You see that? Off with your head. It's your own dread. It's your own loss. It's your own inability to walk away. It's your own death you carry. You're your own abortion. You ain't getting my love, honey. Honey. Ever. Ever. I've worked too hard on myself. I've closed that death cycle out that y'all bring. Closed it out so many times. I can sing while you guys try to sting. You're the ones coward Chiron broken. You ain't godly. You're welcome, girl. Thanks for coming in. Sorry I have to bitch smack these stalkers like this. I apologize. You ain't godly again. Godly, the angels are coming down on you. That's going to be your karma. It's going to wreck you. Can't steal my value. Oh, and Pluto. Did I tell you about Pluto? Did I tell you about Pluto? He's, well, she... She is also known in Capricorn as the Lord of Karma here on Earth. You think Daddy Saturn's harsh with his sickle? He carries a sickle just like Cirrus carries a sickle. Well, Pluto carries a sickle in Capricorn. She is the Lord of Karma here on Earth. And she says all can be forgiven except the lie. You don't fuck with people that are godly. She says, you don't fuck with people that are truthful. She's watching you. She's coming to rape you. And to maybe hang your ass on the unk. <laughs> Here you go. Blasted tower. But my favorite card in the deck, the sword of truth, motherfuckers. And I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> You're all the same. You're all so predictable. Guess what? Stalky stalkers, people that don't know the meaning of no, stop and leave me alone. You're not going to ruin my night. You're not going to ruin Kat's night. And you're just repeating the Neptune and Jupiter cycles on your unicycles. As sweet George Brown says, ain't nobody got time for that. Cat. Brother Chaotic Control and all of you beautiful, loyal subscribers and thrivers and survivors. Thank you so much with the attitude of gratitude for joining me. I couldn't do this without you. I love you all. And I hope you all have a beautiful you every day. 